last video today, we're going to quickly look at stops and starts on your quilt. How to properly stop and start and also how to secure your stitches. Um, and we're also going to look at the options that you have available. Functionality on your machine, as well as the ever popular question, do we cut threads off or do we sew away? So the first one I'm showing you is how I stop and start. And the, the method works the same, whether you're working on a domestic machine, whether you're working on any other brand machine, any type of long arm, sit down machine, any machine. This process is the same. So I would always have my top thread in my hand. And I, it's a very thin thread that I have uh, on the machine at the moment that I'm working with this quilt. Uh, I find my spot where I need to stop and start and now the lovely Amara has got that laser light so I can see exactly that my needle is going to drop in the ditch for instance because that's where I need to start. I will do one stitch, needle up, needle, needle down, needle up and still holding onto my top thread I move my machine or your fabric whichever machine you're working on. Move it away slightly and you can pull up your bobbin thread. <clears throat> apologies then I move back to that exact pace and now what you want to do is I put down about eight stitches not just three or four because they will eventually unpick I do eight stitches you can either do this now in a manual mode or you can do this with our tie on tie or function that we have on the handy quilters so on this first stop start, I'm going to show you with the tie on tie off. And I have on, in this instance, on my left handlebar, I have the little star and that is my tie on tie off. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it, but then I'm going to move my machine. And that's also why I have my finger right here next to the hopping foot. I'm actually going to use my finger and press slightly against the foot and move my machine ever so slightly so that I can get those eight stitches right next to each other and not on top of each other because if we make a stop start knot where the stitches are right on top of each other it makes a big long knot at the back of your quilt and that is difficult to sew away and also if you're going to trim your threads you're going to cut that knot off and it'll unravel so just to explain it to you better or like I would say in my broken, half broken English Afrikaans, I'll explain it in a better manner. If you imagine this to be the warp and the weft, the weave of your fabric, and the red dots I'm going to put down is your stitches, are your stitches, is are your stitches. You want to aim to put a stitch between each one of those fibers. Instead of stitch, 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 all on one section of the fiber, because that's going to make a knot. But if you're going to do stitch, move ever so slightly, stitch, 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 in between each of those fibers. You know that those fibers are like a tenth of a millimeter apart or something ridiculous like that. And if you've done any clothes sewing, clothing making, any other type of sewing, and you have encountered where you made a little stitch like that, a section where the stitches are so tiny and so close together you'll know you cannot unpick that it, it becomes literally impossible because you will end up damaging the fabric so it won't ravel and won't unravel so i find my spot and my machine, machine is set to eight stitches so i'm going to press my tie off stitch and it'll only tie off i've already pressed it it'll only start tying off once i move the machine so I'm going to start moving and it gives me those really quick eight stitches next to each other, not on top of each other. That's the crucial bit here. And then what I typically do is this is now ready so that I can stitch and I will do that just now. Once I've stitched this line, I can actually just cut this thread off. Right now I'm where I need to stop and cut my thread. And it, this will happen in exactly the same manner. I'm going to get to where I need to stop my sewing. I'm going to do those eight stitches that's really close together. So put my push my stop start, my tie of stitches, move my machine ever so slightly, and it's done my eight stitches. 
Then I can raise my needle, move it away, grab hold of the top thread, hold onto it, bring your machine back to where you did your sewing, drop your needle, raise it again, and now you'll see you bring up your bobbin thread. I give it a little tug on the two like that so that the knot is made, and I can just simply clip that off, and that won't unravel. If you are kind of hesitant or you're not 100% sure, you don't feel so safe with this, you can always give it a drop of Prim Freytrick. Now you can see by the wear and tear of this bottle, it, it's in my apron, it's on hand all the time. If there's anything that I'm kind of worried about that might start looking like it's going to unravel, I give it a drop of Freytrick. And this is the only brand I prefer to use because I know it's good quality. It's not going to wash out, it's not going to make a mark on my fabric. So I can use it on the top of my quilt or at the bottom. Okay. Right. Now, if you don't have the automatic tie-on, tie-off stitch function, you can do this in a manual mode as well. So the process still remains kind of the same. You are going to lower your needle and raise it again so that you can bring up your bobbin thread, pull on your top thread, and here's my bobbin thread. Come back to that position. And then I'm going to use my needle up down function to give me those eight securing stitches. And I'm going to do one stitch, move ever so slightly. One stitch, move ever so slightly. So we're trying not to do stitching that is uh, like a reverse stitch where you are backtracking onto it because that makes a really noticeable big bump. Now, if you're doing this in the ditch, then you should be fine by that. But you will probably notice this on the back. So again, you need to ask yourself, what's the purpose of this quilt? Why are you doing this? If this is going to be a show quilt, you need to make sure that you don't have those backtracking stitches on the back. That shouldn't be visible. Stops and starts should be uh, invisible as far as possible or just very, very neat. Now, I've done my several stitches up and down there with my manual function, needle up and down, and now I'm ready to quilt. So now I've reached the end of my stitching line. I need to stop. So you can either continue with a couple of stitches right next to each other or you use your manual needle up and down. And I do my several stitches right next to each other, moving ever so slightly between the, the stitching just so that I don't have all of them right on top of each other. Okay, needle up, move my machine away, grab hold of my top thread, come back, needle down, needle up, and there I have my bobbin thread. And I can just clip that off. Right, and the last thing I need to show you is when you need to work away your threads or whether you want to sew away your threads. Um, we do have a fabulous needle. I love these needles. They are by cinch and it's the side threading needle. Okay, so you don't have to struggle with, see if we can get a better view for you there. It's by the needle lady. And we have some in the online shop available for you and it's a packet of 10 needles. 12, 12 needles in assorted sizes. Now, what I can tell you here is the side threading needle does help a lot in this process. Rather than standing and trying to get thread through the eye of a needle, and we know as we grow a bit older, that doesn't necessarily come easy anymore. So with a side threading needle, I can literally take both my threads and I can just pop it through the needle. Did you see how easy that was? Just hook it on. Let's do it again. I literally just hold on to my threads. Now, let me see which color fabric shows this eye better. Can you possibly see where the opening of the eye is of the needle? I put it underneath my thread on the needle, slide my thread through, pop it into the eye. Bob's your uncle. Find the spot right where you ended your stitching and put your needle through so that you try not to put your, your, fab, um, your threads to the back of your quilt. Because now remember, we are trying to finish projects here. Um, I prefer, if I do sew away threads, that I do it while I'm working. It just feels like I can get more done. It's neater. And I don't have to sit for hours afterwards and sew it away. So just pop that needle in where the thread ended. In between the layers. And we're going to find a space to exit. And pull those threads through. So this is a very fine thread. And it might not want to go all the way through. So we're just going to do it again with this little one. I'm going to show you another method that's 
works really well for these guys just now pull that guy through doesn't have to go into the same spot doesn't matter give it a tiny bit of a tug so that when you clip it off against your fabric it pops into your quilt now depending on how pronounced your ends and starts are sometimes you maybe struggle with getting a neat stop and start you might want to do a sew away thread situation where you only require to do one stitch and i got it here i literally just gave it one additional stitch just so that my threads won't pull out when i'm doing this um, which then means when i sew away my thread i need to just give it a little knot first so just give it a knot um, I know some people in specific directions and um, which thread goes top and bottom and what, 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 but I'm not too concerned about that. Hook your threads through and pop them in and out. And depending on where your knot sits, if your knot is not against your fabric, you don't want a big knot against your fabric, give it a little pull on your thread and your knot pops through. Now the other secret about getting your threads thrown away, sewn away, uh, without struggling to get it through the fabric, is not to use the thinnest needle you can possibly get. You want to use a needle that is slightly thicker than your thread, so that it makes a hole that is a bit thicker than the thread, a bit bigger than the thread, so that the thread can easily pull through there. That hole will eventually, in any case, close up again. So we do get a really neat stop and start by sewing with threads. There's no, um, there's no discussion about it. It's preference, whether you want to or not. Now, let's say you do not have or you can't get fancy dancy, the needle lady, fabulous side threading needles. You can use one of your regular, regular sewing needles or handwork needles. Again, just check the size. You don't want to use a needle that's like five millimeters thick to be, leave such a big opening. Uh, still a thinnish needle and we're going to make a lasso and I'm going to show that to you next. Right, let's say that you have a situation where your threads are rather short. Um, this thread tail of mine I cut off and I didn't think about what I needed to do for instance, I just did and it's just over an inch long. So you will know to get that into the needle and then pull the needle up and try and get it into your fabric, you are going to be frustrated like mad. So an easy method to use is by using a regular sewing needle, a hand sewing needle. And I usually use a contrasting thread so that I can see this clearly. And you make a little lasso. So you thread a piece of thread through and you make a small but strong knot on the end. And not very long. So what you can now do is, first of all, put your needle through the space that you want to work away or sew away. And you can actually pull it through. Do you see my needles through already? And the only thing that's left on this end is the tail end of the lasso. And so I can now actually pull my threads through the little lasso loop and use that to pop my threads through. Pop your ankle. And those tails are all sewn away. And that means you only needed to thread one needle once. And that is a bonus. I can tell you that.
this month's technical tip is about servicing of your machine. You've paid a lot of money for a very nice uh, piece of equipment, but it's like a car. If you don't look after it and you never put oil in it, then one day you're going to end up with big problems. So rather look after your machine as you go along um, and make sure that it is taken care of. So what we normally suggest is that you service your machine every second year, every two years, or every 10 to 15 million stitches. On the smaller machines, the uh, Sweet 16s, the Avantes, the Simply 16s, probably every 10 million stitches. On the bigger machines, you can go to about 15 million stitches. So you need to look on your screen under the systems information to see the lifetime stitch count. That will then indicate to you how many million stitches you have done. But remember, if you've had your machine for five years, but you've only done let's say four and a half million stitches, you still need to get that machine serviced. Yes, it hasn't reached its 10 million, but it is over two years in time. So inside the machine, if it's standing quite a bit and not being used that often, then the lubricants start to get hard and dry out and they kind of drop into different places. So they're not lubricating the place that really needs to be lubricated. So have a look on your systems information on your screen check your stitch count and get in touch with your local agent or with myself if you see your ne machine needs a little bit of TLC. The new year's coming up, it's a perfect time to get yourself organized and get it in for a service.